Okay, given right triangle, so our example three. Given right triangle ABC, determine the length of side AC to the nearest tenth um, and the measure of angles A and B to the nearest degree, right? So we figured out that this has to be the 90 degree triangle. This is side little b, side little a, side little c. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to work out the side length, right? So we know that uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. It's b that we don't know, so we know that a is 11.4 squared. Uh, b is what we don't know, plus b squared is equal to 15.1 squared. So b squared is 15.1 squared minus 11.4 squared. Okay, we need that to the nearest tenth. Uh, so let's just do this. b is equal to the square root of this. Okay, and I'm just going to write the numbers down. So B is 9.902, which will be 9.9 .9 centimeters. Okay, so we're using Pythagorean theorem. Right? If you have two sides of a right triangle, you use Pythagorean theorem. If we want to get the measures of angle A and angle B, now what we should do is use sides that are already there, not use um, calculated numbers. Okay, if you ever do use any calculated numbers. You only round at the end. Do not round in between. So what I mean by that is if you're trying to figure out angle B, you're using these two guys, and you use 9.9, .9, your angle could be off by enough that it's wrong. So instead, we should say, all right, um, in relation to angle A, I've got opposite, and I've got hypotenuse. I'm going to use the sine ratio. So the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of angle A is 11.4 over 15.1. So you notice I'm using the numbers that are given. I'm not using that calculated number. I want to avoid that. And if I do have to use the calculated number, I use the whole thing. Right? Because that keeps going. 9.902 dot dot dot. Okay, so angle A will be the inverse sine of this which is equal to 49.0 degrees. We know the three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So angle B is 180 degrees minus the sum of the other two angles, which is 90 plus 49. And that's equal to 41.0 degrees. Okay. Let's give you a chance to basically give you a chance to copy these down and ask any questions while we're doing it if you have them. Otherwise, we're just going to get through this pretty quick. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> 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 Brought, brought a good learning attitude. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm just going to watch. Yes. Spectator. You come tonight and watch. The juniors are playing. Yes. Not bad. Uh, at 4 p.m. We get out at like 2. Got two hours to get there. Got time to go home and find some warm clothing. All right, you're not done too bad. Determine each of the following to the nearest tenth of a degree. So this again, just using sine inverse, right? 0 0.6821. You plug that in, it's 43.0 degrees. The cos of B is 2 over 5. So B is the cos inverse of 2 over 5. You can just enter it that way. Right, which is 66.4 degrees. Okay, so given a ratio, we want to find the angle. That's all that's going on. There. A 35-foot tree casts a shadow 14.3 feet long. So let's just draw a diagram. Here is the tree. Cast a shadow 14.3 feet long. Not drawn to scale. Trees are perpendicular to the ground, right? Rise straight up out of the ground. Uh, determine the angle of elevation to the sun. So this is the angle we want. Angle of elevation is from the horizontal looking up. 
So somewhere the sun is in the sky, shining away and casting this shadow, right? And there's the shadow. So in relation to the angle, we have the side opposite. We have the side adjacent. That's the tan ratio. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Theta will be the inverse tan, and we can fill in the numbers now, of 35 divided by 14.3. You plug that into your calculator. Theta is equal to 67.8 degrees. Okay. A moment to copy that down. It's all online. Okay, so solving trig, right, it's just here, what do I need to find? I need to find an angle. How am I going to do that? Well, I need to use one of the inverse functions, sine, cos, or tan. What have I got? Opposite and adjacent. So Katoa tells me OA, right? I've got opposite and adjacent. I use the tan ratio. So write it down. Show me. This is what I'm using. I'm using tan, right? I want to find the angle, so I'm going to do an inverse tan. I'm going to fill in the numbers here. And then I just plug it into my calculator. Brad is at the top of the Calgary Tower and sees Angie walking on the streets below. If the tower is 626 feet high and Angie is 300 feet from the base of the tower, determine the angle of depression from Brad to Angie to the nearest degree. Okay, so we got the Calgary Tower, which is 626 feet high. We've got Angie, who is 300 feet away, which should be about half the distance that that is. Want any scale on here? We've got an angle of elevation, and we have an angle of depression, and they're the same because these lines are parallel, right? The street and the horizon are parallel. Angle of depression is measured from the horizon down, okay? By parallel lines and a transversal, these angles are the same, okay? So all we need to really work out is the angle of elevation. That will give us the angle of depression, okay? So... That's theta, so is that. This is the tower, it stands at 90 degrees. This is opposite, this 300 is adjacent. 300 is adjacent. We're gonna use the tan ratio again. You'll often find that you're using the tan ratio. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Theta, the angle we want, right? And the angle of elevation is the angle of depression. Right? And you think about it, if somebody's looking up at you at the top of the tower and you're looking down at them, you're both looking at the same angle as measured from the horizontal. Right? They're looking up, you're looking at the same angle. Okay, so theta is the inverse tan of 626. That's opposite over adjacent, which is 300. And theta is 64 degrees. Okay? And it says to the nearest degree. Right. So make sure you're reading that stuff when you're doing especially numerical response. Right, make sure that you're reading and getting the right uh, angles. Okay, I'm just going to whip through the next four, and then we'll do the cosine. Okay. And luckily, you'll have all weekend to work on this stuff, right? Yeah. Determine each of the following to four decimal places. This is really just typing it into your calculator, going sine of 52 and then rounding. 0 0.7880, cos of 15, 0 0.9659, and the tan of 45, 1 point, and if they want four decimals, because it's really just one, but then write 1.0000, 1 okay. If they say to the nearest tenth, round it to the nearest tenth, and you get like 12 is the answer, write 12.0, right, in numeric response, write 12.0. Determine the unknown sides of the following right triangle to the nearest hundred. Okay, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem. It does tell us it's a right triangle, so we can mark that as the right angle. Um, we cannot use Pythagorean theorem because we only have one side, so we have to use trig. In relation to the 32 degrees, well, forget the 32. In relation to the 90, this is the hypotenuse. In relation to 32, this is adjacent, and this is opposite. Now, we should try and use only numbers we have, right? Which in this case is the 32 degrees and the 12.36. So 
So if I want to find the hypotenuse and I have adjacent, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to use the cosine. So say the cosine of angle A is adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? So I've got two things I know, angle A and adjacent. I know this and I know this, so I can work out the third thing. So I now fill in the cos of 32 degrees is equal to 12.36 over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by hypotenuse. Divide both sides by the cosine of 32, right? So keep in mind, as what we're trying to solve, we have to multiply by the hypotenuse, then divide. If you want, you can go straight from this line to this and just say that hypotenuse is equal to 12.36 divided by cos 32 degrees. Okay, so either do this and then this, right? If it helps, do this step in here. And if you're good with just flipping those two around, do that. Okay, and then solve, and the hypotenuse is equal to 7.72 centimeters. Sorry, that's wrong. 14.57 uh, centimeters. Okay, now, if you want to work out the opposite side, you, again, what you should do is try and avoid using this calculated number. <laughs> if you do use it, use the full value, right? Use what's in your calculator. Don't use a rounded value, okay? Never use, never round intermediate calculations. Now, we can avoid doing that by simply saying, okay, this is adjacent, I need opposite. I have 32 degrees. The tangent, is opposite over adjacent. The tangent of 32 degrees is equal to uh, opposite, which we'll just call opposite, over 12.36. The opposite side, multiply both sides by 12.36. So it's 12.36 times the tan of 32 degrees. And you'll get 7.72 centimeters. Okay, so this is 7.72 centimeters, and this is 14.57 centimeters. Okay, if you plug these in and went 12.36 squared plus 7.72 squared and then took the square root, you're not going to get 14.57, but you're going to get something pretty close to it, right? Because again, if we were to check that using rounded values, we would be close, but not exact. So if we can avoid using a rounded value, we should, right? Or avoid using a calculated value. You can't always, okay? You cannot always avoid using a calculated value. But if you do, make sure it's the full number in your calculator. Either write it down to eight decimal, which is a waste of time, right? Or store it somewhere, or just bring it down to second function answer. Oh, I've shown you a hundred times. A wheelchair ramp is to be built on a house. If the entrance to the house is 1.2 meters above the ground, determine the length to the nearest tenth of the ramp if the angle of inclination is to be 8 degrees. Okay. Here's a house. Here's the ramp. This is 1.2 meters here. That's 90 degrees, right? The house is perpendicular to the ground. We have an angle of inclination of 8 degrees, so this is an 8 degree angle here. And we want to know the length of the ramp, which is x. So in relation to the 8 degrees, we have opposite, we have hypotenuse, we're going to use sine. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 8 degrees is 1.2 over x. X times the sine of 8 degrees is equal to 1.2. X is 1.2 divided by the sine of 8 degrees, okay, which is 8.6 meters. Okay, so I'll give you a chance. You can take a look at it, right? So you can always look at these later, um, you know, if you need to, or if you didn't get a chance to write something down and it's going by kind of quick, just... Uh, you can go in and print it off. It'll be up in Schoology. I will also put fully worked out solutions to the seven questions up in Schoology. So as you do them on the weekend, you can uh, 
you know, you can sit down and look at the fully worked out solutions if you need to. So if you're not getting the answer, because the answers are on the bottom of the sheet, if you're not getting that answer, then you can go look at it. Okay, as well, you'll have some cosine law stuff to do. So we'll finish this off. Last one. Uh, given that the angle A in the right triangle shown, okay, if it's a right triangle, put it in. There's the right angle. Angle A is 58 degrees. And the length of the adjacent side is 5.2 inches. Determine the length, <coughs> lengths of the other two sides. Okay, so um, this is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. This is opposite. Okay, I would probably just use trig twice and not use Pythagorean theorem, right? Because that will avoid using a calculated value. So we'll say the tan of angle A is opposite over adjacent. Okay, there's three quantities there, right? There's angle A, there's the side opposite, the side adjacent. You need to know two of them. Okay, if we know the opposite and the adjacent, we can get the angle. If we know the angle and the opposite, we can get adjacent. And if we know the angle and the adjacent, which we do, then we can get the opposite. So we say the tan of 58 degrees is equal to opposite. Now you could label this if you want. You could call this little a, call this b, call this c. Okay, so if you want to label that there, then we could say, okay, it's little a over adjacent, which is 5.2. So multiplying both sides by 5.2, we get little a is 5.2 times the tan of 58 degrees. And little a is equal to 8.32 inches. Okay. They didn't say rounding, so, you know, I mean, if it's, if it's a multiple choice, it'll kind of be obvious what they're rounded to. If it's numerical response, there's kind of a rule of thumb. If it doesn't say rounding in its numeric response, then it should just be a whole number. But it should just work out to a whole number. right? If they want you to round to the nearest whole number, then they should say rounded to the nearest whole number. If they don't say anything about rounding, especially like on a diploma with numeric response, your answer should be a whole number. Okay. It's a convention. right? If rounding isn't mentioned, it should be a whole number. Okay, now we want to work out the hypotenuse. Again, we're going to avoid, right? I could use this number, but the full number is stored in my calculator and use Pythagorean theorem, okay? But I don't have to. It's just as easy to use sine, right? So the sine ratio, oh, sorry, I want to use cos because we, uh, we know the adjacent side, okay? So we're going to avoid using a calculated value. So we'll say the cos of 58 degrees is adjacent, which is 5.2 over hypotenuse, which I've labeled as little c. c times the cos of 58 degrees is equal to 5.2, right? So multiply both sides by c, get rid of this. Now divide both sides by cos 58. Right? Or go straight from here to here simply by interchanging the C and the cos 58. Okay? And then work it out. And to the nearest hundredth would be 9.81 inches.